you would have heard, because Sean would have played this morning, I can't imagine he didn't, um, excerpts of her rant, rave, um, hate speech, whatever it is. And if you remember rightly, two days ago about this time, I said that New Zealand is headed for a civil war. And I will keep banging this drum. And I, it don't, won't come immediately and it won't happen uh, tomorrow um, or necessarily in one clear and defined linear step to get there. But can I say the rhetoric of um, Kiri Tamahiri Waititi um, and it, it will have this effect. It's the same effect as a radical iman preaching to a Muslim congregation who has no intention of blowing anybody up but is at, but is at the extreme end of, if you like, um, of, of, of the Muslim religion. You know, there are Christians like that as well. But somebody who preaches that basically Muslims are the only decent people in the world, the Jews are some sort of abhorrent strain, um, and that jihad and sort of 24 Vestal Virgins are waiting for you if you do something that, that advances the cause of Muslim um, and disadvantages the cause of, well, Jews and Israel and a bit like that. And, and in actual fact, I don't know that you could necessarily go to any New Zealand mosque and hear that particular preaching. But if you popped across the Tasman or you went to Dimmer's Darkest Coventry in the UK or a variety of other uh, European countries, you would hear that uh, sermon on a regular, regular basis. Now, the problem with rhetoric and the power of words is that a lot of people now have devalued. So in my lifetime, the word genocide meant something when I was young. So genocide is what they did to the Jews in the Second World War. The Germans did to the Jews in the Second World War. That is genocide. You're trying to wipe out an entire race. And I thought that that was a relatively unique event until I studied history and discovered that on a number of occasions there had been other genocides. The Turks had tried to wipe out the Armenians at the start of the 20th century. I didn't know that. They didn't teach that in my history books. And then, of course, in the 1980s, um, there was the Rwandan genocide, which was the Hutus and the Tutsis going for it. And I think it was the Hutsu, Hut, Hutus desperately trying to wipe out the Tutsis, um, some of the most appalling and graphic image of the 20th century. In actual fact, even, well, certainly on a level, I've got to say, with the appalling and graphic imagery um, of the ovens of Innsbruck. But anyhow, but rhetoric has changed. So now you might use genocide just for saying, oh, they're going to get rid of the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi from council legislation. Suddenly, that's become genocide. You're try and now, Kiri uh, Tamahiri Waititi is trying to stir up all Maori folk. And there are a lot of stirred up Maori folk this morning, and there'll be even more this afternoon. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, to try to stir up Māori folk with a rhetoric that suggests that if Māori do not defend themselves, and I mean by force of arms, um, they will be wiped out as a race and ethnicity and a culture by this current government. All right? Now, that's extreme rhetoric. The idea that literally, not metaphorically, literally, um, the government of the day, the Pakiha government with its Pakiha budget today, is going to eviscerate Mauridom. Now, okay, I don't believe for a moment that Kiri Tamahiri Waititi, the wife of Rawiri Waititi, the daughter of John Tamahiri, um, and one of, if not New Zealand, uh, Te Pāti Māori's leading ideologue. I think that's the best way to describe her. She's the Strauser or the Strausler of, um, of, of, the, of Te Pāti Māori, uh, the propagandist. Not, not, she, she could, well, she could be the Goebbels of. Mm, interesting. Uh, but it's, it's a race. But yeah, maybe she is the Goebbels of, um, of Te Pāti Māori. And, and, and the idea is that if you extreme your rhetoric, 
to the point that you suggest this, there will be some stupid, deluded, disturbed Māori, probably male, with probably mental health conditions and a probable criminal past, who's listening and taking it on and having explained to him in the most graphic terms why he isn't living on Paratai Drive with a beautiful wife, kids that go to a private school and an enterprise that allows him to fly around the world because that's only for Pakeha. And he's been denied that future according to Christina or Kiri Tamahiri Waititi by a, a Pakeha government uh, seeking to commit genuine genocide against him and his people. How long before we get the first terrorist attack in this country? The first bombing? The first lone wolf attack? The first terrorist stabbing in the cause or in the allegedly Maori cause? And I'm going to suggest to you this morning and sound out a warning that if this rhetoric continues, and sadly it will, if, if, no, when this rhetoric continues, there will be the stupid, the deluded, the disturbed, who will literally believe and literally take arms and violently oppose this government. And, by nature and definition, Pakeha. Um, we've seen terrorist attacks around the world. Um, they are always committed by, and largely, particularly the suicide bombers, it's almost that they um, are mentally deluded. It's not simply, it's very rare, I have to say, for somebody to uh, uh, partake in a lone um, wolf terrorist attack, uh, be it with bomb, gun, truck, uh, or, or knife. It's very, very, very rare um, for those acts to be committed by intelligent, educated, and emotionally adjusted people. They aren't. And there are a lot of people in this world who aren't intelligent, um, who aren't emotionally adjusted, uh, and who are um, hurt, uh, disoriented, uh, consider themselves a failure, uh, but have been promised a better path and now have been given a higher cause. And if that means hurting, harming, killing, murdering uh, people of another race, ethnicity or culture, uh, then ta-da. And so what I'm suggesting to you is that in 2024, the rhetoric of Kiri Tamahiri Waititi must inevitably lead to violent acts um, perpetrated against individuals, perhaps the government, perhaps not, um, or institutions, um, and, and that that is the inevitable consequence of suggesting that genocide has been committed against her people. Rauri um, Kiri Tamahiri Waititi is not alone. Uh, the re and, and the only thing is that fortunately, and in many ways it is fortunately, it's a sort of act of serendipity. She's put herself on TikTok and mouthed these particular rants and raves um, for all of us to see. And, it, and it, to be fair, um, we, we don't know what's happening on the Marae or at Te Party Māori meetings, or, but we've now got a bit of an insight into it. And I'm certainly not talking about all Marae, but some in which the people like um, Tamahiri Waititi uh, speak. And I'm very worried. Now, you could, and perhaps that's part of the strategy here, suggests that the Te Party Māori and their act of protest this morning, uh, and which will be ongoing all throughout today because it's Pākehā Budget Day, not Māori Budget Day, not Indian Budget Day, not Chinese Budget Day, not South African Migrant Budget Day. No, it's Pākehā Budget Day, which I think means me and my ancestors. It's our budget. Um, you could think today that this is designed to scare, and I think it is, to intimidate to make fearful those who are not Māori, to the point where a whole bunch of liberals and lefties 
um, who will be fellow travellers and, and essentially are fellow travellers, um, will be able to turn around white person to white person and say, I don't want a future at which we're at war with each other. Can't we just concede this? Can't we just go back to the way we were? Can't we just forget about removing the Treaty of Waitangi and its principles from legislation? Can't we just go back to the special privileges and treatment that Māori were afforded as a consequence of beating, being our treaty, sorry, Tariti partner? And that, so I'm, I'm not quite sure. If the aim here is to scare whites into conceding by force of intimidation, and remember, Tamahiri Waititi has threatened the overthrow of the state. And, and here's the next question. How much are our mainstream media aiding and abetting this? I'm not aware of any protest that I have seen, and maybe I've got it wrong, and I'm, I stand to be corrected, in which stuff which is a major national news media organisation in this country, would advertise repeatedly the congregational points and the physical addresses and the times for people to congregate at various places around the country in support of this day of rage uh, from the Maori people against the Pākehā budget. But you could not look at stuff at the moment and the coverage of this particular event and not regard them as playing the role of anything from argent provocateur to potentially the aider and abetter. Because there they are saying, look, here they are. If you go to the Z station at South Auckland at 7.30 this morning, that's where it's starting. And they published that all day yesterday and they've published that all day again on their live feed this morning. Now they are aiding and abetting what is really um, uh, a protest of hate and, uh, and, and an endorsement of the rhetoric of the most extreme leaders of these protests. I, 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 I can't remember them doing it for um, the farmer protests. I can't remember them doing it for protests in, in favour of free speech. I can't even remember them covering many of the protests because it didn't fit their political flavour or their philosophical endeavour. But I'm watching it now. So I'm now watching elements of the mainstream media in this country aid and abet um, hate protests on this day. Protests with rhetoric that is designed to inflame, to incite, and eventually, I would argue, to make violent the stupid, the deluded, the disturbed who are amongst us. And believe me, some of those people don't need too much encouragement. They've been given it in spades over the last 24 hours. Love to get your thoughts on this one. 0800 3323 uh, Can I also just say 0800 debate if you forget that because I always do. 0800 debate, text 5050. Can I always say though this too, and this is important as well. If you reversed this, and it's the old game, but we'll play it again. You know how this would play. If this was reversed, if the rhetoric was of a Pākehā group who are out there asserting that genocide was being committed against them and saying the same things as Kiri Tamahiri Waititi, not only can I just say, would there be widespread media condemnation and potentially a censoring of that sort of rhetoric, but I would suggest to you that the police would have been knocking on doors and arresting people a long time ago. But then we've got Cuddles and Kiss Costa in charge, haven't we? And his ameliorative rhetoric and his appalling management style. 